Thanks to the supporters of channel member JM Thoughts. Well, we had started the new season really rather well. Then we got battered by one of the Atlanta United feeder teams. And now today we have to play another one of the Atlanta United feeder teams. It feels unacceptable that there were all, all these big clubs were allowed multiple feeder teams in the same league. Hello and welcome to part 112 of Born in the USA. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games for you. We're away against Atlanta United Academy and at home against Reno. Rain, rain. We talked about this last season and I think people did explain. I think it's Reno. I'm going to say Reno. If it's Reno, then it's wrong. It's Reno. Um, but this is how the season started, as you can see, pretty well, until we went to Atlanta and got battered 3-0 by Atlanta United 2 who have had a very interesting history, started in the Championship, ended up dropping down to League One, back into the Championship, down into League One, then dropped down into League Two, where they got promoted in fifth place from League Two last year. And um, we're now playing Atlanta United Academy, who started in the National League Two. So way, way, way away from Atlanta United Two. Um, but it shows just how much they're showing the same player base and have effectively converged with each other because they came charging up through the leagues, as so many of those academy clubs did, uh, making it as far as the championship for one season, uh, going back four or five years ago, but then got relegated back down into League Two and actually came up from League Two last year as well in third place. So they got automatic promotion with uh, Atlanta United 2 winning the playoffs. So the two Atlanta United teams now back in League One. And uh, I mean, they're, they're level with each other in the league and everything. This is ridiculous. It shouldn't be allowed. I need to pick out some of their play. Right, their key player. Has he played for the other one as well? Interesting. No. So he moves back and forth between Atlanta United and Atlanta United 2. Let's check Atlanta United Academy. Their key player. Was it Paris Saint-Germain? Hold on. Let's try. Let's try their captain. See, he's just in the academy. So it seems like the academy is run as a separate club because they don't move back and forth between the first team. So I guess the academy is a separate club where the parent club have the right to yeah, a local partnership in which players are loaned. So it's just a first option loan situation. So they're not fully sharing players. Whereas I think this team is completely sharing players. But yeah, players can move freely between Atlanta United and Atlanta United too. So this team should definitely have the advantage over the other one. But the academy seems to be quite well run as well because they're right up there also. It's rubbish. It's it's really rubbish. Have we signed? Did we sign anyone else before the window closed? Um, I don't think we did. I think you met Paul Rosales. He's the goalkeeper. Um, so I think you met him in the last episode. So let's just get straight into this match and take another pasting in Atlanta and then get on with the rest of our season. So... We're going with Rosales in goal, a back four of Mitchell, Baron, Corby and Gutierrez. Gentry and Allen in midfield, Rodriguez and Robinson out wide, Pearson and Martinez up front. Tristan Wright uh, not having a very nice season so far after his poor attitude and poor attitude to training in the summer. Mauro Martinez, who of course shouldn't be fit, has started really quite well though. Seven goals in seven appearances in all competitions, averaging a 7.4. He is our main man up front at the moment. Uh, Pearson has not done terribly. Um, and of course, we've still got Jonathan Davies as well, but he's injured today, who I would probably consider him and Martinez our first choice strike partnership currently. But Al Britt has been uh, getting in and around the team as well, mainly on the right wing. So don't worry about his lack of goals. Probably worry about his 6.5 average rating. But I mean, he was he was on another Atlanta team. I mean, they're, I don't think they're anything to do with Atlanta United. They're not. They're just a completely separate Atlanta team. There's too much football in Atlanta. It's ridiculous. Right. Let's uh, Talking of Atlanta, let's head there now. Let's try and do a football. And it would be nice to, to come here and right the wrongs of a couple of matches ago because to come and lose 3-0 after we'd had an unbeaten start to the season and looked like we were cruising towards the title, which is... I mean, remember, that's the goal for this season. We scored enough, and I'll keep labouring this point... We scored enough points last year 
to go up automatically every other season previously. And in almost every one of those seasons, we would have won the league with the points that we got last year. We've gone out and strengthened that team. We've not lost any players, brought in four or five players who are even better than what we already had. We should be walking to this league title relatively easily. We shouldn't be going anywhere and losing 3-0, especially against a team that came up from the league below in the playoffs last year. Uh, Baron now with the header, and there's a first goal of the season for Frank Baron. We know he's always going to be a threat from set pieces because of how tall he is. You know, I love a tall player at the near post for a set piece, and Baron definitely fits that mould and puts us 1-0 up. I hope the postman just come in to celebrate Baron's goal. He was very happy, delighted to hear we'd gone 1-0 up. He knows Atlanta can often be... Uh, a difficult trip for us. He, he knows what happened the other day. He was here for it. Post, postman's here every day. Always the same guy as well. What a If you're my postman and you're watching, let me know down in the comments. Say, hi, I'm your postman, Kev. I only expect one of those comments. If there's more than one, then I'll know there's liars in our midst and I'm not comfortable having liars in our midst. Um, as it stands right now, we're top of the league again, which is somewhere where I am a little bit more comfortable. This is how this season was supposed to go. Although Atlanta are looking to uh, get an attack going just before half time here. So we need to make sure we snuff this out and Rosales is there to make the save, to keep it at 1-0. And I think they're just going to have enough time to get this corner taken before the half time break. And we get to have another another look at that league table to make sure that we're still top of it. I'm not sure how close Charleston are to us. And we've just had notification of two Charleston goals. But I am happy with the performance so far. Um, Charleston... Nowhere near us. So it must have been the team they're playing that are near us and are now losing 2-0. I didn't even notice who they were playing. Right, Gutierrez with the cross. And Martinez can't quite get onto the end of it, but Gentry's picked it up in midfield. And now Allen playing it across to Gutierrez. Squares it for Martinez. And there's an eighth goal of the season for him. And he's quite good. It, it's taken him a while. Obviously, we had all of the registration and injury issues last year and he didn't look with it in the playoffs because obviously he wasn't with it in the playoffs. He wasn't fit. He uh, he hadn't played any football for a year at that point, but he's got a good preseason under his belt and he is now scoring for fun this season. It's a shame he's 30 years old because he's not going to be not going to be a player who leads us into the next level, I wouldn't have thought. But just to come in and score an absolute hat full of goals for us this season is just what the doctor ordered. I mean, not that Tristan Wright is a is a terrible option for us, um, but he did his goal scoring did slow down in the second half of last season. His training has been poor quite a lot, and I, ju I just wonder if Wright might have an attitude problem that could that could also be affecting how well he performs. Let's say in big games like the playoffs. Uh, Pearson's going to get the opportunity from the penalty spot here as we try and go three 0 up and fully correct the, the error of coming here and losing 3-0 just two weeks ago. We're now winning 3-0. It's Pearson who grabs the third, a third goal of the season for him as well. And we are looking pretty comfortable. And that should be three points on the board to start the episode. We don't need to see the replay of a penalty. Um, Fort Lauderdale are our nearest challengers, according to that. And I kind of They're winning 4-1 away from home. So um, I think we are looking pretty good for being top of the league at the end of this match, which will be nice. This Mailoff's going to come on on the left. We're going to bring on Al Britt on the right. Um, Miss Mailoff, we know what we're getting from him. Britt, we are, uh, we're, we're still pushing that one a little bit just to see if he's going to be an option for us long term because I still at the back of my mind, I have the worry of what happens after Robinson isn't loaned out to us again. I mean, he's been loaned to us every season since we discovered him in the Bourne Town under 19s or under 18s or whatever it is. Many years ago, he's never played a game of football for anyone else since that discovery. But he's also never been our player. He's another one of these who we've just had on loan a lot. Similar to Oren O'Rourke. Absolutely identical scenario between the two of them. The only two players born town have ever agreed to lend us. And uh, we've we've decided to cling on to them, even though they've both since moved on to MLS clubs in their own right. Or not MLS clubs, Premier League clubs, I think. Rosales has just made an absolutely brilliant save. While I'm waffling on about two lads, one of which isn't even in the team and the other one's not on the pitch, Rosales is making an absolutely stunning save to maintain our clean sheet. And we're now going to go up and try and grab a fourth as well. We've got a few seconds left. Pearson is in. His header goes just over. It's going to be a 3-0 finish. I think we are going to end the game 
at the top of the league as well, although Cal United, I think, were pretty close to us and could have just leapt above us again with that point right at the death. I'm not sure what the points difference was between us and them. We might actually be down into second place. I mean, it's still early in the season. It's not a big deal just yet. In fact, no, that just draws Cal United level with us. So we play Reno next. Um, another win and the table's starting to look the way it was always supposed to look this season. Well, after playing so well against Atlanta, no changes for the Reno game. Um, oh, I've just hit that twice. Not that it's a big deal because I don't really know what that screen does. I don't... <laughs> does, does anyone read that screen? I certainly never pay any attention to it. It's just an extra click. Um, but Reno are a team who were pretty close to us at the start of the episode. It looks like they lost the first game of the episode and have dropped down the table a little bit. Meanwhile, Fort Lauderdale and Cal United have both won their games in hand that they had over us or have won earlier today. You can see Cal United... Um, I don't know if they've beaten Tormenta or have just taken a very, very early two-goal lead. Um, but we're currently down to third place in the league again. But a win here will put us back to the top of the table. And that is obviously where we want to be. So 26 minutes in. We haven't had a highlight of our own yet. It's uh, it's all Reno at the moment. But fingers crossed, we can nick the ball off from here, go up the other end and score a goal. That's got to be the plan. Martinez, I want to say he's doing some good pressing. He's not really moving, though. It's a very weird way of passing for Reno. He didn't really seem to have any desire to get the ball around him. Martinez ended up getting in behind, but unfortunately his shot is a poor one straight into the hands of the goalkeeper. And uh, yeah, not, not the brightest start from us. Mitchell with a free kick. He tries to do a clever one, play Rodriguez in, but unfortunately Rodriguez can't get the crossover to the, uh, to the lurking forwards in the middle. Um, and Reno play the ball forward again, but because they seem to have no attacking ambition whatsoever, um, our entire back four just stood there with no Reno players anywhere near them, and we were able to just pick the ball up and start moving it forward again. Mitchell now trying to play it into Martinez, gets a bit lucky with the uh, with the missed interception from the defender, and Martin, Marti I don't know whether it's Martinez or Martinez, I haven't decided. Martinez, probably, um, but he's got the accent, it might be Martinez, um, but he... Uh, yeah, he's got in and he's applied a decent finish this time. Very lucky there with the with the missed header. It's some poor defending from Reno, um, but it's 1-0 to us. Um, and that should put us... In fact, it won't put us top because Madison have come from somewhere. Where have Madison emerged from? They're 2-0 up in their game. They must have had a game in hand that they've now played um, because even if we win today... I mean, we're ahead and we've somehow dropped from first to fourth. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how that happens. We're now back up to second place again. Um, but... It's early days. We don't need to worry too much about league positions just yet. Um, as look, all we're really concerned about is making sure that nobody starts to pull ahead of us and start to uh, start to get into a position where we can't catch them or we're not in a title race. Similar to last year when you saw DC United get so far ahead that even when we started to play quite well towards the end of the year and they had a little bit of a drop off, they had such a lead that there was no catching them. Having said all that, we've now given away a penalty at only 1-0 up. And this is letting Reno back into the game unless we have a save from Rosales. And that's exactly what we get. He looks like he's going to be going down as a pretty decent investment. He made a very good save in the last match. He's saved a penalty again for us here. Um, he is costing us money to have in on loan, which is a little bit unusual for our loans. Normally, we try and bring in the free loans, but um, Rosales is costing a little bit. Um, but already showing that he is worth every penny of it so far. Um, right, we just need to make another substitution. I don't know why I only made one. I normally make two at this point in the game. Um, can't break that habit. McGlynn can come on. And I think I want to bring on Tristan Wright as well. He can come on and play as the false nine. I need to get him back into the team and back into form. But like I say, he trained really poorly. He had a really poor preseason. He was pretty poor towards the end of last year as well. He kind of just fell off the pace. Why have we dropped back down? Are we about to concede a goal? And this has already updated us back down to 18 points. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Because we were on 20 points. But we've been glitched back down to 18 on the league table. So does the game already know we're going to concede a goal that we haven't conceded yet? It's mail off. Playing it out to Mitchell. Mitchell with the cross right can't get it goalwards, because that then makes me wonder, if the game already knows we're going to concede a goal, then surely I'm powerless to stop it happening, no matter what I change. It makes me question everything about Football Manager, if the game already knows the result 
before I've even decided to make changes or not. I'm I'm hoping this is not the case. But yeah, we're still showing us 20 points there. We definitely dropped back down to fourth on 18 on this bit down here. Maybe that was just an error. But if we do now concede a goal, oh, I'm going to be putting my conspiracy theory hat on. Um, Rosales making the save again. 15 minutes to go. And I don't really know what that was all about. Has anyone seen that before? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, Martinez, Martinez, Mauro with the header into the hands of the Reno goalkeeper. And I'd just like to see the end of this game now because I'm now living in constant fear that there's going to be a late conceded goal that we're not going to be able to do anything about because it's already written in the stars. Um, we're, we're now doing exactly what Reno were doing in the first half. Ball played forward, nobody pressing against the back four and it just gives them so much time to take it down comfortably and pick a spot with it. But it's McGlynn now back to Corby and um, Corby playing it forward to Gutierrez and um, he can't get his crossover, but Robinson plays it back to McGlynn who is going to try for a cross. It's Malov's there and his header goes just wide as well. 79 minutes now. It is still 1-0. We're back down to third in the league again, which is absurd see we're back now we're back at 20 points again on this bottom left hand corner one now and they've just missed a free kick i'm gonna I'm just gonna put it down as a weird glitch before I'm, i've decided to rule out the conspiracy we are still in control um and now tristan wright with the opportunity to show us why he deserves to be back into the team he's broken away from his defenders brilliantly here and what a goal from tristan wright to score his first goal of the season. And hopefully that is him back now. Because if we can have four good strikers all competing with each other for starting spots, then that is a very nice situation to be in. Jonathan Davies is going to be fit again very, very soon. Tristan Wright has decided he's back in form. I think Pearson is certainly going to be dropping out of the team for the next game. Um, Martin Martinez probably keeps his spot. Um, but Wright and Davies are going to be pushing him very hard now. Ball forward now from Wright to Martinez and his shot is saved by the goalkeeper. 2-0, two, two minutes to go. This should be over and done with now. Charleston 5-0 up away against Atlanta United 2. I really don't know how we went there and lost to them. Everyone else seems to be absolutely thumping them. We just had a weird off day, I think. And uh, hopefully we don't have too many more of them over the course of the season, because it's looking like there are a couple of decent teams. Madison and Cal United look like they're going to be problematic for us this year. But there is another comfortable victory, 2-0. Um, keeps us, I think, in third. I still don't really under... I mean, there must have been games in hand that they played in between the two matches, because I don't know how you can win both matches and go from first to third. In fact, we're down to second now. Um, so we went above Cal United, but Madison... Still in there. There's no... LA Galaxy are the only ones with a game in hand now. And they're far enough behind to not be a problem. So we're sat in an automatic promotion spot. That'll do nicely. And there's your confirmation that he was quite a good signing. Four good saves and an interception in that match. We'll take it. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.